Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you doing? Hope you're doing great. Hope you're learning. I hope everything is going well. Today I'm going to introduce you to something called an initializer list in a class, and I'm going to show you when and why it's important to use. Now, there are different uses to this, which we'll talk about later when we get to inheritance as well, but we won't get into that, but at least I'll show you a little bit of that today, just so you know that it exists, all right? So just think about that. Uh, another recommendation is to go ahead and check out uh, a book on C++. I don't say this enough, but it's really important to watch tutorials and stuff. Of course, it's easier to learn sometimes through that, but all these beautiful details, juicy details, mostly you'll probably get from a, a nice book like C++ Primer or something like that. So please go check that out and, uh, and then you should be good. I have some more links in my description box for other tutorials that you can check out if you want to. Other than that, let's just get started. So I'll make a little class called class, um, what should we call it? Class dice. All right, we're gonna make a little dice class. So it's a really small class, but something that we can use. So I'm going to make a public part here and a private part and we're going to use that whole thing with defining stuff in, in below. Um, so private is just going to be int value and we're going to have a dice constructor, a, a virtual, you don't have to think about virtual still, just don't, just make sure when you make a destructor, um, make it virtual, it's, it's good to have a virtual destructor later on when you once we talk about um, we start talking about inheritance but for now let's just go ahead and define those and what what can we do with a dice well we can do a we can make a accessor and a dice should be well we can create a dice with a value int value all right so we're gonna choose what type of dice it is and then we're going to randomize it and everything. To randomize, I'm going to make a in include uh, C time, like that. And then, yeah, that should be good. Let's just go ahead and do that. Let's make a little function here, const get value, if we ever want to do that. Const, const int get value. Um, boom and then we're gonna do a function called toss so it's gonna be a const int toss const and this is basically gonna toss the dice randomize it and give us a value uh, that we want now this is this is where I'm gonna show you the whole thing with the initializer list so let me just go ahead and create a let me define all of these actually. Now let's do um, class dice. So this is where I'm going to define all of these things. Uh, dice, dice, int value. And all this is going to do is this value equals value. So if you remember, if you haven't watched the old videos, the previous ones, please go ahead and do that about classes because it's really important. If you have the same name, you need to use this um, because this is a local variable and C++ is going to choose the local variable over anything else. So you want to make sure you write this to access the actual value and put this temporary variable into that. Um, so yeah, just make sure you do that. Uh, and then we do dice. Um, uh, whoops dice like that so this is a little tedious but we should be good just in a minute and that's just gonna be empty no problems and we're gonna have the uh, this one you know what I can do I can just do control dot and then control dot control period and that should define those for us here just like that so just go ahead and copy paste this code if you can't do the control period enter um, thing you can also right click and you can go into quick actions and then you can create definitions on the fly like this so this one is going to return this value for some reason we'll just we'll just have that if we ever want to this is going to randomize a value and send it back okay <clears throat> so this is going to return a random from zero 
or one to the value. So this value. And I'm going to do plus one just because we're going to get from one to this value. All right. Uh, so this is just going to return an integer. So we, well, every time we toss it, it will be random. Now in our main, we have to define srand. And we'll do uns our time unsigned static cast static cast unsigned zero and then we'll have randomized all the stuff we should be good as good to do because it's good so just make sure you do that so we can get some random values this will make sure that every time we want another random value it will depend on the time and we give it a different seed every time so we get a different random value every time we run the program um, so that's good now we have a dice dice we'll call it d6 and we'll give it a value 6 obviously because that's a six sided die all right now I'm gonna do a std c out d6 um, dot toss and a new line now if I run this program, we won't have any problems. All right, so I haven't shown you the initializer list yet, but I shall, so don't worry. Oh, we need a system pause here as well. There we go. Okay, so this is just a regular class. We tossed it once. Let's toss it a few times, four, uh, maybe six times. We'll toss it six times, and then we'll do a new line after each. So just put that in a for loop and we should be able to toss it a couple of times. So we tossed it six times, one to six. See, that works just fine. Now, what if you say, hmm, this value will never change because once you create a dice, you don't want it to change its value. It will always be the same. So usually you would want a constant here, right? But you don't want to you don't want to initiate it right here. You don't want to initialize it right here. Okay. You don't want to do that. And Although you can now in C++11, but I'll teach you this because you can't initialize, for example, if we would make a reference here, int reference uh, some ref anything, just some reference to an integer. A reference has to be initialized, okay? But there's no way to initialize it here because there's nothing to initialize it with. It needs to come from the outside in through the constructor, okay? So it's a reference to something outside. And you'll have to do that at some point. For a constant integer like this, it's okay now to initialize it here. All right. But still, you have nothing to initialize it with. If you want a value from the outside, from the constructor, there is no way to know that this dice can be something dynamic, right? Something from the outside. Because out here in main, let me just give you an example. Out here in main, I might want another dice, dice d12. But I'll give it a 12 value, right? They're different. They're still a dice class, but it's a different value in each of these uh, two die, right? So, but if we set the value to six here in the class, then every dice will be six, no matter what we do. So it will kind of be like a default value, and we don't want that. We do not want that. So we want it to be constant, but it we don't want it to be one value forever. Okay. So we just remember, you do that for constants and references. So the way we fix that to use this integer. In the constructor let's go to the constructor right here so dice int value now it's complaining it's saying expression must be a modifiable value but it's not because it's a constant now it can't be changed regularly in here because here C++ looks at this even though it's in the constructor it's seeing this as a change to value it's not seeing it as the initialization to value but if you want a true initialization a true very good and true initialization of a variable you have to do it like this you have to between the curly brace and the end of this parentheses at the end of this the head of the function you have to create a one colon right here one colon and then that's the, your initializer list and you don't you use um, you don't use um, this here because it, it doesn't know it just knows that there is something called value and it should be it should be another name for this it, it doesn't have to it can differentiate that value is the class because this is what we're initializing and we want to initialize it with this integer 
the local variable. So that's how you do it. Now, if we had more things, you could say value two equals value two and so on and so on with a comma. And you don't need a semicolon to end this. But just make sure you do it up here because now it's not going to complain. Constants and references can be initialized through the initializer list. And it's very important. It's very important. Initializer list for constants, class constants. I think class constant. Uh, member variables, a long name, and references. Uh, so that's good. Just remember that. So it's used for references and constant variables. So in this case, now we set the value to any value. It's still constant, still kind of optimized. And at the same time, we, uh, we don't get any issues. And we can make several different die right here. So now if we want to say D 12 toss let's toss d12 six times now let's see now it's going to be up to 12. see how it could create two different die with that class no problems right um so just go ahead and think about that just remember that it's very important and it's a good way to initialize stuff and what i wanted to tell you guys before i end this is kind of going overboard over course or what do you want to call it so this isn't something we're going to talk about until we start with initial or inheritance but the way you do it sometimes a class can inherit from another class. So one is the parent, one is the child. All right, and the child class gets everything that the parent has. All right, mostly of what the parent has, what you define it should get. So it can get a bunch of stuff, but usually the parent is a class and it has a constructor of its own. So you wanna call that constructor first and then call the child class's constructor. And that's something you also do in the initializer list so then if dice would be a parent of parent dice if that was a class you would call that constructor here just like that and that tells C++ that this constructor should be called first it should be initialized and then I'll call the rest in here whatever is written in here okay all of this so this happens first parent dice is initialized that part of dice and then dice's own stuff is initialized so that's a good thing to note just until we get to that point when we start talking about that. But for now, just remember the constants and the references. I hope you learned something today. I hope this was okay. Um, keep working hard. Please go check out the description box. There's a bunch of links down there. If you want to support the channel, please go ahead and subscribe or like if you want to. If you don't, it's really enough that you're just watching and I hope you're learning something. That's all I need from you guys and girls. But yeah, thank you so much. Take care. All the best of luck to all of you. And yeah, I'll see you guys and girls in the next one, right? Bye-bye.